it's Matthew Holt with another THCB Spotlight. And today we're looking at new funding for a brand new CEO. Well, not really that brand new. Hey, this is Lyle Berkowitz. Lyle is, uh, Dr. Lyle Berkowitz has been around about in health IT for quite a while now. <laughs> Good old friend of mine. And uh, last time, Lyle, I, was see, see, I saw you uh, exiting stage left from MD Live, where you were uh, head medical director for a while. You spent some time at Health Finch. Oh, are you uh, you one of the founders and we're the eventual executive chairman. Um, you've been floating around healthcare uh, and then they exited. They had a good exit to, hang on, Health Catalyst, is that right? Correct, yes. Oh, yeah. right. They were they great, great partners. Um, and then I assumed you were just like on the beach drinking Mai Tais, which I think was the last time I saw you hanging out with Jacob Ryder somewhere in Costa Rica. Yeah. But no, today we're announcing that uh, you have a new venture called KeyCare and you just closed $24 million to start it up. So... Key care is you're back in telehealth. So the first question, obviously, is uh, given what's happened to telehealth stock prices of the big guys like Teladoc and Amwell, um, did you need mental health counseling before or after you did this thing? <laughs> why, why are you back in telehealth? And what is the niche you think that uh, the key care can fill, given the amount of funding, effort, and uh, uh, infrastructure that's gone into telehealth across the board in the last couple of years? Yeah, well, it was certainly taking a, a completely different tack at it. Yeah, I, one I, I really like to think about is virtual care. Um, you know, we've got yes, telehealth. There's automation there, and what we're doing with key care is focusing on how we can be of service to health systems. You know, we're looking to have great partners to which they can you know, outsource a variety of activities um, in the virtual world. Um, you know, you've often heard me probably say, Matthew, you know, the, uh, I, I use the sad philosophy to figure out how to make doctors happy uh, and patients healthier. That's how do we simplify, automate, and delegate routine, repeatable, rules-based care, the triple R threat that is overwhelming our doctors. And so you know, when I looked at the healthcare world, you know, I look at health systems getting overwhelmed. Um, and quite honestly, you know, I never would have thought about you know, uh, this uh, except for COVID. Um, and COVID has brought to light that health systems can and should be delivering more virtual care. Um, and it's made patients aware that this is a really viable thing to do. But the peak that we saw in, in health systems doing has gone down, not because patients no longer want it, quite honestly, because their physicians are busy being back in the office doing what they do best. And that's what I want to do. I, I think health systems are amazing. I think they should be focusing on the most important complex things, but they also need, their patients need to have some routine stuff taken care of, whether that is refills or routine urgent care or chronic, you know, remote patient monitoring or follow up after you know hospitalization and these routine things can often be done in a more automated asynchronous virtualized way um, and what we're trying to do is how, how can we help health systems um, take stuff off their plate that we can do for them so they can focus on the more important things and uh, i felt that the best way to do this was to work on the system that they're working on um, and um, you know, let's face it, Epic is, you know, the, you know, the most widely used EHR in the nation. And so what if, you know, we could put virtualists uh, onto an Epic platform and make those easily available to take care of a variety of activities for a health system so that while they're dealing with workforce shortages, they can start letting us take care of some of the patient care that needs to get done so they can breathe and focus on the complex patient. So in the end, both sides win. Patients get their routine care more easily done uh, with, you know, in the, under the umbrella of their health system, um, but done in a, a convenient virtual way. But when they need to get in and see someone face-to-face -face for more complex stuff, there'll be more openings as well. So that's, that's the, the, the big vision of what we're trying to do. All right. Well, uh, that sounds great. And I get the idea about, you know, let, let's be on the Epic system because that's the one the most healthcare system on. If there is such a thing as an Epic system, which I think is maybe a bit of a misnomer. But uh, let, let me ask you the obvious question, right? So a lot of people are doing something that sounds like that already, right? So uh, Teladoc, Amwell are already providing 
tele telehealth services to those systems. They already have their own medical groups. You have people like uh, organizations like Wheel and SteadyMD, which will supply you know, virtuous on demand. You have people like uh, Rubicon and others who are doing specialist on, 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 the, on specialist care, specialty care on demand. Then you have a scad of people who are doing direct to consumer stuff, um, either on behalf of the employer, direct for a consumer, you know, whether that's the row, hinge, lemonade, part of the world, or people get all, all companies who are who are trying to figure out how do we how do I go directly, you know, provide virtual care here and then physical care there. A lot of it you could say, you know, some of that's already been sold to big health systems, some of that's going around them, going through health plans, going through employers, going through other, you know, one the one medicals of the world do a lot of virtual care. Mm -hmm. How how do you sit there and say there's room for one more and it's different? Mm -hmm. Um so if you as I've been talking to health systems, you know, over the past few months, you know, what we're hearing is that they you know, are either falling to the bucket of they're working with some third party that is using a, a separate proprietary, poorly interfaced um, e, you know, the system that's, let's face it, not even a, a, a fully you know, meaningful use certified EHR. Um, and they're not fully satisfied um, that the experience for the patient is a discontinuous experience. The quality of the care is limited because of the data is not readily shared uh, either way. Um, so uh, these virtualists are making decisions without having the full knowledge of the patient and vice versa. The um, content and data they're creating are not coming back into the system in a way that's fully digestible by the system. Uh, and so uh, in those cases, you know, they're saying, hey, if we can work with another group um, another organization that is able to um, provide us something that is, is a consistent experience across you know, two Epic instances that allows us to share data, they're highly interested. And if they're doing it all themselves, um, you know, they're running into the, the limitations you'd expect. They, you know, certainly aren't able to offer 50 state you know, care. They're often limited to what hours they do. And you know, they're limited to how much volume they could even handle. Uh, and um, the other thing is that a lot of the urgent, the other, the telehealth you know, vendors who are out there working with health systems, you know, they're, they're working on limiting technology. Um, and, you know, we're looking at, you know, an Epic as, uh, as a full tech stack, right, that is able to support much more than, you know, just urgent care, behavioral health, etc. Uh, and so we actually, on one side, we're, we're working with the health systems, but on the other side, importantly, we're out there working with you know, companies that you mentioned as a way to say, hey, let's let's use your staff uh, and uh, put them on our platform uh, and make them more readily available for health systems. Uh, we're really trying to promote innovation and support you know the the whole the whole network of of wonderful telehealth companies that are out there uh, who want to work with us. We are you know we are um, able to help um, provide both a more robust technology and a way to more easily support health systems in a variety of ways. Well, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I Not quite what I thought you were doing. So I thought you were building a medical group. Um, and now you're telling me that you're actually building a technology that's based on Epic. And Epic's got all this technology already, right? They have integration with Zoom and they have a whole bunch of the stuff they built already um, that could be used virtually. Uh, so, so are you providing? Virtualists, are you going out to other sets of virtualists and signing them up for the system? Are you providing the technology? What extra technology are you building that key care is building that doesn't already exist in, in uh, Epic? Or are you just putting it all together and build, building the services business? So we say we can do, uh, we have a couple of building blocks. Okay. You know, the, the first is, you know, we have, you know, we are, you know, um, part of the Epic community. So we have our Epic instance uh, okay. and we've optimized that for virtual care. Um, and we'll continue to do what we can to make that as, as wonderful as we can for the virtual care community. Building block number two is we can staff with the virtualists. Um, you know, we you know, will contract and work with a variety of other groups. Um, and, uh, and it can be anything from physicians to APNs to nurses to dietitians to therapists to coaches, etc. Um, are you, are you, third, are you, are you, on that point, are you hiring W2s? Are you just going to conduct with a bunch of 1099s? Or are you going to go off and meet with folks like Wheel or whatever who have their own? Assume that we can do any and all of the above. Okay. Um, or we'll be able to do that in the future. 
Um, the third thing is, you know, we can also, of course, um, integrate our instance with a variety of tools and products and remote you know, monitoring devices and other things that can enhance the system further. Um, and we then can take all of these building blocks and create a solution, right? So an urgent care solution, um, 24 by 50 state might be, you know, our optimized version of the Epic platform staffed with, you know, 24 by seven urgent care virtualists, um, maybe at some point connected to some type of remote monitoring device for temperature, et cetera. Um, but though, you know, that's the vision of how we would then package that as a solution that we then go to a health system and say, hey, we can help you um, with urgent care. In the future, we're looking at a variety of other, you know, um, virtualist types as, as well. Uh, but our goal, you know, is to truly be a of, of service to figuring out what the health systems need and want, uh, what's available that's out there, what can we you know, buy, build, or partner um, to make it uh, as available to them as possible. But all of this being done you know, across this, you know, this Epic platform that now has been set up and optimized for virtual care, number one, and number two, for servicing and working with all these health systems. So you haven't, you're not quite starting from scratch, right? You've, you've uh, I know you just, just, just announcing the raise, but you've been working a little bit with uh, Spectrum Health in, in Michigan, who are one of the investors as long, along with uh, AVC and LRV Health and Bow Cap, Capital. So uh, what are you actually doing for them? Um, just tell me what you're doing for them, and I'll, then, I'll be, then I'll dig in about whether healthcare health systems are going to be paying this leap or so, not. Yeah, so we, we went live with them to, to provide 24 by 7, 50 state coverage for urgent care. Um, so if a patient goes to the Spectrum Health website um, and requests an online urgent care visit, and they're outside the state of Michigan, um, they are now able to get care, and they'll do it through providers who are staffed on the key care platform, and they'll be able to make that request for that appointment within the Spectrum Health uh, MyChart portal. Um, they don't have to create a new username. They don't have to type in their meds and past medical history, all of those things are being shared. Um, and so their experience is seamless. Um, the, the data is, is shared between the two Epic sites. Um, and you know the patients are happier, the physicians and health systems happier. So everyone's winning from that perspective. So how big is, do you think the market? I mean, obviously there are, you know, people have left San Francisco and New York and moved out to more rural regions and what have you. But in general, most of the business for any big health system like a Spectrum or any of the, the big regional health systems that we know that we know and either love or hate, um, you know, have been primarily people living in those regions. Um, and does it matter that much that they require out-of-state coverage? There can't be that many people who are, who, are wandering, who are wandering around. But there are another set of people who are uh, patients who quote unquote, leak out of those systems because they have whatever advanced cancer and they go to a center of excellence or they are sent by their employer. You know, they have a deal with Glenn Tillman's coming in and ruining, ruining, their, ruining their lives and making them go to like, you know, some some fancy place in New Mexico or wherever, right? There, there is some movement around. And I think a lot of this is about, uh, is about the, the systems you're working trying to keep and capture those those uh, patients within them, within them. Is that something that you're going to be able to do now moving into? How do you, how do you see this? How important do you think this is for individual local health systems? Yeah, so when we talk to health systems, the out-of-state coverage is, is certainly a nice to have because yeah. you know it's just one more thing that they don't want to start losing and they want to be able to offer. Um, but you know, we're you know, as we talk to you know, now that we've got up and running, the goal is of course, you know, what should we do in in-state? Maybe it's going to start with after hours, um, but what we're what we're hearing um, and seeing and what we've known for a lot while is is Number one, the potential is actually huge. If you think about it, for every primary care physician a health system has, there's got to be a couple patients a day who would be interested and want to have some type of virtual urgent care visit. Um, and, and But most health systems aren't aggressively going after that um, and maybe losing patients via leakage to other urgent care centers, to other online um, places that are not connected. And so we want to make sure they can make that promise to patients and be available to them. Um, and second is, you know, the um, the more that we can sort of help take care of these patients who are clogging up their ERs and clinics, et cetera, the more of the appropriate high value patients they can actually see. 
So overall, our goal is to say, hey, health system, if this is how many people you can see now, yeah, how do we increase your funnel size? Because you're going to be happy because yeah, in a fee-for-service world, of course, there's a downstream revenue and the bigger the funnel size, the better. In a value-based world, the bigger the capitated panel that you can take care of, the better. And yeah, you know, we're able to help you do it in a way that is, you know, as is high ex experience and high quality as possible, you know, with a partner, um, because we're sharing, you know, you know, we, we've done everything on this, on this shared system. And yeah, we don't have to spend 10 years and X amount of money trying to build up a technology. We're using, you know, the most you know, mature sort of EHR out there. Um, and a lot of people, um, don't fully recognize you know, how well Epic has built this Epic to Epic interoperability, um, not just for data sharing, which is great, but now also this new functionality that allows for appointment um, across instances, uh, as well as the potential to send messages, orders, and other things over time that will allow us to truly support a health system in a variety of ways. All right, last question on the market, and then we'll talk, we'll talk about the, the business and what you're going to do. So go back to what I said before, right? A lot of people are trying to figure out how to own the patient in this area. Yeah. Systems want to keep them. We know the systems lose money on primary care because they want to drive them to the to the inpatient, you know, the inpatient service lines where they make money on stuff on them. A lot of arguments back and forth about how much primary care doctors are worth and how much urgent care is worth and all that kind of stuff. A ton of other people, as I've mentioned, trying to get hold of those patients, obviously plans. Uh, including the big national ones who are buying, uh, who are either working with uh, uh, independent doctors like the mm -hmm. Data, Ever, what are they called? Ever, uh, whatever the hell Anthem's called now, Ever Last, Ever, Ever True. I shouldn't remember their name, or else I'd be upset. But, uh, you know, Optimal, obviously, in the United, that bought a whole bunch of doctors. Um, that war over who owns the doctors, who owns the patients, how do you think typical health systems, like the ones you're going selling to, how are they doing? So on one hand, you know, sometimes they can be victims of their own success. You know, at the end of the day, you need tertiary coordinary care. You got nowhere else to go except the health system. But what they they recognize and what a lot of these other competitors are recognizing are that, yeah, you know, he who owns that patient owns it, that flow. Um, and so there have been various models over the years, right, where you capture that primary care um, and that decides where, um, where you eventually go. Um, and particularly if you're at, in some big at-risk scenario. So uh, health systems we're talking to are very aware of this. They're very cognizant, of course, of the competition for what feels like, oh, that lightweight, easy stuff. But they know that you know, once patients start you know, going somewhere else for primary care, you know, you know, there's a big chance that they may lose them. And so they are looking to say, how do we own that whole pyramid? How do we make sure that funnel is as wide as possible? And that's, you know, that's where we want to be of service to them. Again, we are not looking to create, you know, a, a brand um, uh, uh, as much as be of service to the health systems. Um, we strongly believe that our health systems are amazing. Uh, when I hear, you know, young, hip, you know, you know, the internet companies saying, oh, health systems are dinosaurs. We don't need health systems anymore. We can do everything online. I'm like, you know, that's not the case. Um, but if health systems could do some of those things as conveniently as some of these cool hip uh, internet health companies, uh, imagine um, how much happier um, patients would be who are able to, to then work with their health systems at both ends of the spectrum. Super easy, convenient stuff online, um, complex stuff that needs face-to-face -face visit, more uh, easier to get and make an appointment. That, if we can, again, blend that, that health system is going to be able to to take care of a bigger population um, and patients are going to have a more consistent experience throughout their lives. So, 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 sounds good. I'll have to get you on with uh, Jonathan Bush and Fred Rodenberg to think about the, the dinosaur approach. <laughs> that'll, that'll be fun. Okay, la last question, practicalities. So uh, you got written a big check, which is very nice. I don't know if it's in the bank account yet, but you're kick kicking off very early stage. Where are you as a company? How many people you got? How many clinicians on the line? Where are you with the... Uh, Still private, but you know, so we're not re, you know, talking about specifics. We're, but we are early. We're growing. You know, we are. You know, we are in the midst of of gonna uh, gonna be a very, I think, busy year. Um, you know, we are going to be at Epic's user group meeting next week. Um, you know, we are in talks with a lot of a lot of uh, health systems, um, uh, even some non-Epic health systems, 
uh, you know, is we still have the ability to support them as well. Um, but the uh, but there's no question. You know, we expect to have some rapid growth over the next year as we as we've proven out the model. Technically, you know, it's feasible. It works. Um, it works very nicely. And and now you know we're we're gonna you know gonna be hiring. You know, go to our websites. You know, go to our LinkedIn. Uh, connect with us and uh, and see what we're be, we'll be doing. Right. So the last most important question is: Are you hiring for a CEO, or is this what you're going to do? Um, I, this is what I'm doing. I'm it, Matt. Right. The uh, it's it's fun. I I you know have I, I warn uh, folks right. You know, physician CEO. How does that work? I've yeah you know, I've had a, a a lot of wonderful experiences over the year. I'm smart enough to know I've got to hire amazing people. Um, and yeah, I've been really fortunate. You know, we have uh, a, a number of people you know, in the organization you know, who, you know, you know, we're now a bunch of kids. You know, we've got a, a number of people who've had many years at Epic, who you know, years in telehealth, years at health system, years in startups, et cetera. Um, you know, we are, we're, we're not a point solution. We're really saying we, we want to help fundamentally change how health systems are able to work with and take care of their, their patient populations. Um, and for me to be successful, it, it always going to wind up, you know, hiring great people and and uh, and being able to move forward. But I'm having a blast. That's fantastic. I've been speaking with Lyle Berkowitz. He is the CEO of new company KeyCare. Just raised twenty four million dollars today, backed by a bunch of raft of uh, famous venture capitalists, and are working with Spectrum Health and other healthcare systems to be announced. And if you're hanging out in Madison next week at the FAAGM, go go look him up. He's usually good for beer in the bar afterwards. I tend to find out. Plus, he has $24 million to buy now, so <laughs> but it won't be that. Well, thanks for your time. Good luck with the new venture. Thank you, Matt.